Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Well in this video I'm planning to image the homunculus. That's not the homunculus I'm imaging. Can we get the correct one please? Oh, okay, sorry boss, sorry boss, I'll get, I'll get the right one. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Well in this video I'm going to attempt to image the homunculus. That's still the wrong homunculus. Look, forget it, we'll just tell them in the actual video. Oh, roll the intro. Okay, so where the hell did the idea of a homunculus come from? Well, it turns out it was popularized in the 16th century by alchemy, uh, and it referred to the creation of a miniature, fully formed human. And believe it or not, it was sort of popular theory that organisms developed from miniature versions of themselves. Ew, gross. <laughs> I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! Fast forward to more recent times when we were starting to unravel the mysteries of the brain and the new concept of the homunculus was born. Say what? So if we look at the human brain, we can actually see... <gasps> oh, sorry, hang on. There we go. Is that better? The homunculus is a distorted representation of the human body based on the proportions of the brain dedicated to sensory functions, sensation, etc., and motor functions, i.e. to movement. As a result, you end up with these guys. The sensory and motor homunculuses? No, nah, that's wrong. Uh, oh, homunculi. Yep, that's better. They got big hands, big mouths, and, and little tiny bodies. <gasps> So back in 1840, gazing into the night sky at the constellation of Carina, it was noted that the star Eta Carina suddenly brightened. Ooh. Hang on, that's way too far back. Whoa. That's much better. Suddenly brightened to be one of the brightest stars in the night sky, and then over the next 50 years, it gradually faded again. So if we zoom into the Carina Nebula and actually look at Eta Carina, which is right next to the Keelhole Nebula. Uh, it was actually discovered that there was a strange looking sort of bipolar nebula with a couple of equatorial sort of protuberances which has come to be known as the homunculus. And actually when you peer right into the center of the homunculus, Eta is actually not one star, it's actually two stars, a large star and a smaller star rotating about each other. And the larger star, which is about a hundred times the mass of our sun, expelled a large proportion of its material in 1840 to produce what we now know as the homunculus nebula. So the nebula is called the homunculus because of its apparent similarity in ground-based telescopes to a small humanoid. Of course we know that's not actually the case. So. So looking at the different spectra, I was hoping to get some sort of shape in the visible, although it is extremely bright, so I wasn't sure how that was going to go. Uh, the next one, ultraviolet, that was not going to be a possibility, didn't have the right equipment. I didn't know about the hydrogen, maybe I'd pick up some of the hydrogen immediately around the homunculus, wasn't sure. X-ray, that was also definitely off the cards, um, I didn't have the equipment to be able to do that either, so that was my plan. Okay, we've slewed to the keyhole um, in Carina, and this is. We can see how bright this is because this is only like a 12 second 
um, exposure. So I think it might be 12, might be 15 second exposure. So you can see how bright this is. And this is the area I'm trying to get, which is uh, Eta Carina. And um, you can see already how bright it is. Just move this off a little bit. Okay, we're about 10 seconds away from uh, the first image. Uh, so this is two minutes on S2. Um, and as you see, this is like 20 seconds, so it's it's a bright target. And uh, there we go. Hang on, let me just get full. That's the full version there. So, um, you know, there's plenty of detail in here just after two minutes. And these stars are quite bright. Um, and this is Eta Carina, which we just zoom in and have a look. You can see I do have a bit of a problem here, and I don't know if it's due to the 533, but there is this sort of radiating lines coming out from this extremely bright star. There's a little bit of it going on here as well. So I'm going to have to deal with that when I do some processing. Um, not sure how I'm going to do that, particularly since I want to try and bring out detail in here. But uh, anyway, this is, uh, we'll just keep going. And um, yeah, it's a very bright target. So, you know, two minutes is more than enough, I think, on this. Okay, I'm just going to do a focus run on HA and then take some really short exposures. Um, I think it's going to have to be a second or less than a second because there's, you know, it's obviously was quite bright even in the focus run. So um, it's going to have to be pretty quick. Okay, the um, auto focus run is complete. So I'm just going to go up here and run some really quick exposures just to have a look and see what that star looks like. The star being Eta Carina. One second and see what happens. Okay, you can still see the nebula in the background even with one second. Okay, I'm starting to see some of the detail that's around the um, monculus um, in here, but you can still see it's really, really bright. So let's just stop that and we're going to go to half second. Well, there's, there was the one second ones were picking up more of the area that was around here, which I know is actually real. Um, that's just not a flare or anything like that. So I might just go to one second again. Might do that, might do some one second exposures and some um, of those. And uh, I also need to do some RGB. Now, I did do a few um, another night and kind of needs to be down at 0.2 of a second, which is incredibly short, especially for a, well, the Mead scope is normally f10, but it's got the focal reducer on it, so it's probably closer to f7, f7.5, something like that. Um, so it is a little faster, and uh, but I, I know that I needed to do very, very short exposures um, in order to not blow the thing out completely, the star out. So we'll do some HA uh, one second exposures, and uh, then move on to the RGB. Okay, so let's have a quick look into uh, PixInsight to see what I captured. So I've just removed the stars here to make it easier to see the, the background detail. This is the HA. The keyhole is here. Uh, we can see um, the Defiant Finger here and also the Mystic Mountain and um, Nebulosity around the keyhole. This was the O3. Um, star Exterminator seemed to have trouble getting rid of the star here for some reason. Again, the Defiant Finger and the Mystic Mountain looking a little bit pale. Um, not as much detail and not much detail through here. But when I looked at the S2, I actually saw there was quite a lot more. This is slightly stretched a bit further than the, the, the basic stack. But I noticed there was a lot of detail of, of in the S2 for the Mystic Mountain and also this area here. You can see it's a little bit more noisy in the background as is customary with an S2. And a lot more interesting detail around here near the keyhole. And I really wanted to preserve that because when I um, just stacked it with the HA and the O3, the HA tended to drown this out a little bit, HA and the O3, both of them did, because they're relatively plain through here. So I used some masks and things and, and sort of stretched the S2 a bit more so that I could preserve at least some of this um, interesting detail that was present. So yeah, I thought that most of the interesting detail was in the S2 actually, rather than the uh, in the HA, which is not often the case. Um, what I did was I combined those. I did multiple different versions. Here's one. 
version. Uh, here's another version. Uh, here's one. And this is the one I ended up working with in the end because I think it had a nice sort of variation of the colors and, and also showed the Mystic Mountain with the S2 areas here as well. So that's what I worked on uh, to make the sort of final image of the background. Then I had to work on the homunculus, um, which was going to be a bit of a challenge. So I'll show you the green here. So this, these are 0 0.2 second exposures, just remember, and it's still very bright. But you can kind of see some shape now of the homunculus. Um, nice and smooth around the outside, and I'm mentioning that for a reason, because you'll see in a couple of the, the, the stacks um, I had a bit of a problem. So this is the blue. That also looks good. But when it came to the red, um, you can see here that we're seeing some of this HA emission nebula here, which is because of the ultraviolet radiation coming out of the stars here and coming through the homunculus nebula and exciting some of the hydrogen out there. But I had these concentric circles causing a bit of a pattern here, which I had to deal with. That was also evident on the HA. Now the HA you can see, even with one second exposures, there's sort of still some pretty good detail back here, which shows how bright um, uh, the Carina Nebula is. But if we zoom in now, we can see this HA emission nebula here, and there's a bit of a stick of HA sticking out over here, but I've got these concentric circles to deal with. So that was a bit of a challenge um, to try and minimize that for the final image. I ended up using um, this uh, equation, which I showed you in my previous image for M101, uh, where you can vary the symbols there for extracting the HA. And so I ended up with, um, I think it's this one here. This is with the HA effectively extracted. Um, and you know, you can see quite nicely here this HA emission. You can see a bit over here. Don't worry about the stars. I don't, um, when you add it to the red, that doesn't seem to cause a problem. Um, but you can see the concentric circles are here still. Uh, a little, little dimmer, which was, which was good. And then I use this um, equation here, add HA to add it to the red channel. So this is the red and HA channel. So um, again, the whole area here, the HA standing out quite nicely. And you can see a bit of a stick out here, but also we've got these concentric circles, which I ended up using the game mask just to sort of isolate some of these areas and just to try and smooth that out so it wasn't so obvious in the final final image. Um, so what I ended up doing was, I just want to show you, uh, not this one, sorry. We'll just go to here. This was a bit of a um, working to try and just bring out some of the, the, the shape and a little bit more of the detail of the homunculus. So the background is very dark here. And you can see the HA quite nicely here and a bit of a, a stick of the HA um, poking out here. Still a little bit of the concentric circles, but I had dealt with it a lot better, but um, still a little bit of a problem. And that then had to be sort of blended in with the the rest of the image. Um, so it didn't so it looked like it, it sort of um, fitted in quite nicely. I'm just going to show you a couple of pictures. So this is what Hubble shows, and I've so I've rotated a little bit to match the rotation of my um, image, and that's why Hubble's on the side there. I actually put this in Astro Bin so that it was straightened up. But here's the homunculus, the sort of bipolar um, bubbles here, but there are a couple of equatorial um, sort of bubbles or protrusions sticking out here where there's been a, been a bit of a sort of blow of material out in this direction. And with that, um, a lot of ultraviolet radiation is going out and exciting this area here and also exciting the hydrogen here and making it glow. And if you look at this image, uh, which sort of matches more with mine, I've said energized by the UV, but energized by the ultraviolet equatorial emissions. So that coming out through here and here. And you can see this bulge here is this bulge here. And this bit coming out here is this more faint bit coming out here. And again, we can see there's that star and that star. And here we are here, sort of same. So I was really pleased that I managed to get the HA emission as well as the homunculus. Um, and it was a matter of blending them all together, which was um, took a bit of time, I have to say. And I tried multiple different um, versions. Uh, and a lot of work in Photoshop, but I managed to finally come out with this version, which I was quite pleased with. So we have the um, homunculus nebula here, which we can see some of the detail and shape of it. 
Um, I think these are sort of the equatorial emissions there, a little bubble there and a little bit there. And that's producing this bulge in the HA here that glow a bit more. Not quite so evident by the time I merged it, but you know, it's, it's here anyway. And the two stars are in this very bright area here. Uh, this is um, God's uh, middle finger or the defiant finger, which, uh, you know, the nice to see the universe um, has a sense of humor. And I thought this is quite nice. The Mystic Mountains did show up quite nice, or Mystic Mountain did show up quite nicely uh, because I preserved a lot of that S2. And you can see some of this pattern in here, which would have been lost if I um, had have not tried to um, keep that more prominent. Um, and again, here, a bit more the detail around the, the nebula here. So that was basically my final image. I did take some 30 second exposures for the stars and I stacked those and, and, and put those back in at the end. Okay, and that's my image of the Homunculus Nebula. Um, I'm, I really enjoyed this little project. Uh, set myself a challenge, didn't know how I was gonna approach it. Um, and just had to guess the sort of exposures that would work. Uh, and in the end, I'm quite happy with the, with the result. Um, I know the homunculus is quite small in the image, but um, you know I don't have access to a 24 inch telescope. I've just got to deal with what I have, which is the 10 inch mead. But I was quite pleased. I, I could see the shape of the homunculus um, and I was also very pleased to be able to pick up the HA emission around it as well, which I hadn't anticipated that I would be able to pick up, uh, not knowing that it was there before I started this project. Um, it was also good to learn a bit more about the homunculus and its history and, um, and hopefully I've taught you a little bit about um, homunculi in general uh, with the 16th century um, alchemy and also what is known about with the uh, brain. So look, um, if you found this video interesting, um, give it a thumbs up, that would be great. Please leave a comment or a question if you have one. I'll, I'll try to answer every single one that I can and um, look I'd like to thank everybody who's been watching the videos and um, commenting and and liking the videos uh, that's really been helping the channel to grow and uh, look until next time I hope everybody's getting lots and lots of clear skies.